In this video, the master instructors from Best Incorporated will demonstrate the procedure for installing a wire into a gold-plated solder cup terminal. The sample used in this video is not mounted to an electronic assembly, so the procedure will involve the use of a terminal holding device. Select the appropriate gauge wire for the terminal. In this case, the wire is a 20 gauge wire. The wire should not be altered to fit into a small solder cup. Likewise, the cup should not be altered to accept an oversized wire or wire group. If multiple wires are used in a terminal, the wires should not be twisted prior to insertion. Strip and clean the wire to a length sufficient to insert the wire for the full depth of the terminal, plus a little extra. The extra length of wire can be trimmed to the final length after the wire is measured for the terminal in use. Wires that are to be installed in solder cup terminals must be tinned prior to the insertion into the terminal. When installed in a cup terminal, the wire should have approximately one wire diameter of clearance between the soldered connection and the wire insulation. A wire diameter is defined as the diameter of the wire conductor and the outer diameter of the insulation. In this demonstration, the solder cup terminal has a depth approximately equal to the terminal base ring. Using the terminal as a guide, cut the wire to the appropriate length, plus one wire diameter, then set the wire aside. Gold, when mixed with solder, can cause the solder to be brittle. To help ensure a good soldered connection, the IPC J-Standard 001 Requirements for Soldered Electrical and Electronics Assemblies Process Document states that the gold needs to be removed from the inside of a gold-plated solder cup terminal. A double tinning process can be used to remove the gold. Begin the gold removal by securely mounting the terminal in a holding device. Insert solder wire to the full depth of the terminal. Additional small diameter solder can be used to add to the volume of the solder. Prepare a number 2 solder wick by twisting the end of the wick to allow the wick to be inserted into the solder cup. Use a large thermal mass soldering iron tip and place a very small amount of solder on the iron tip as a heat bridge. Touch the outside of the terminal on the back side near the bottom of the solder cup. When the solder completely reflows inside the cup, gently place the solder wick into the molten solder. Inserting the solder wick slowly will allow for the wick to heat and draw the solder out of the cup. Move the wick around inside the cup to wick out any solder and gold from inside the cup. If necessary, trim the solder wick to allow fresh wick to be inserted into the cup. Using a stiff bristled brush and an appropriate cleaning solvent, clean the terminal cup to remove any remaining flux residue. It is helpful to twist the corner of a small lint-free wipe to reach to the bottom of the cup to remove residues and cleaning solvent. Repeat the process of filling the cup with solder, heating the cup and solder, wicking the solder out of the terminal, and cleaning the cup. This double tinning process will be sufficient to remove all the gold from inside the solder cup. To install the wire, once again place solder wire into the cup as was done for the gold removal process. It may be necessary to add a small amount of solder to the iron tip if a dry tip will not transfer the heat into the cup. If additional solder is needed on the iron, be sure to use a minimal amount of solder. When the solder in the cup melts completely and coats the inside of the cup, slowly insert the tinned wire into the molten solder. Allow the heat from the solder to transfer into the wire before completely inserting the wire. The wire should be inserted for the full depth of the cup and against the back wall of the cup. After the assembly has cooled, clean the connection using a stiff bristled brush and lint-free cloth. Be sure to scrub the assembly well to remove any remaining unactivated flux, flux residue, and other contaminants. Wipe the assembly dry with a clean wipe and inspect according to the IPCA 610 document. The IPCA 610 groups electronic assemblies into three classes. These classes are based on the intended end-use environment for the assembly. 
Class 1, general electronic products, are those where the major requirement is that the assembly is functional. Class 2, dedicated service products, are assemblies where continued performance and extended life are desired, but not critical. Typically, the end-use environment would not cause failures. Class 3, high performance or harsh environment products, are assemblies in which high performance and performance on demand are critical. Downtime cannot be tolerated, or the extreme environment may be uncommonly harsh. According to the IPCA 610, on a Class 3 assembly, the insulation can extend to and even touch the soldered connection as long as it does not interfere with the required solder connection. As a maximum, the insulation cannot be more than two wire diameters from the connection and the exposed wire cannot cause a potential short to other objects on the assembly. A wire must be inserted for the full depth of the cup and should be against the back wall of the terminal. A wire that leans forward away from the back wall of the cup should be avoided, but it is not considered a defect condition if the wire is not against the back wall of the terminal. The inside of the solder cup must be filled with solder, and the solder must continue to rise a minimum of 75% of the distance from the lip of the cup to the top of the terminal. The terminal can have smooth solder buildup on the outside of the cup as long as the solder will not interfere with further processing of the terminal or pierce any insulation placed on the terminal. Visit and follow us on our YouTube channel, Soldering Geek, for more videos. For training classes, supplies, and more, visit our website, www.solder.net.